At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, when you shall see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, he that readeth, let him understand. Then they that are in Judea, let them flee to the mountains. Those are words taken from St. Matthew's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Good, orthodox, solid teachers will be great preachers, especially in the last days. Those orthodox preachers who will preach from the pulpit will have divine power behind them, divine efficacy. Again, especially in the last days, which our dearest Lord speaks of in today's Holy Gospel. And there will be miracles of grace within the souls of those who truly listen to these preachers, with some signs even being manifested to show their supernatural activity behind the words of the preacher. We will come to know that the all-powerful king is preaching behind his priestly ambassador. Through the mouth of the prophet Nathan, for example, who preached just a simple story about a rich man with many sheep and a poor man that just had one little ewe lamb. But this one sermon becomes like a fire which pierces the heart of King David, who knew the story applied to him and his act of adultery and murder. Yet the message of the prophet brings David to his knees. And King David has acts of contrition and acts of penance. And consider to those pagan Ninevites who did not know their right hand from their left. They were saved by the warning of the prophet Jonas. They were driven to repentance, literally with every citizen and beast, fasting from food and water, all while wearing sackcloth and ashes. In addition, we must mention in this sermon the great work of the great Dominican St. Vincent Ferrer, who is also known as the Angel of the Last Judgment. There is much to say about this wondrous mendicant friar, this Dominican, for his prodigies, his wondrous works were even present in his infancy while he was still in the womb of his own mother. But it was his preaching. It was his miracles that confirmed his preaching that are of interest here. The latter half of the 14th century when he lived was very much and is very much like our present day. It was a dark period for the people of Christendom. There were crimes of men that surpassed even the crimes of men during the time of Noah just before the worldwide flood. It seemed as if the gates of hell were fully opened and that the devil had been fully unleashed. There was the great schism, which perhaps you have read about, where you had as many as three different popes at one time. There was an increase in black masses with satanic rituals and even child sacrifice. There was the rising up again of the errors of Gnosticism and, of course, the inevitable group of libertines, deviants, and perverts. Seeing the horrible state of his people, the good Lord decided that the time of judgment had come. It was over. But before allowing the unleashing of the terrors of the end times, the Almighty would send out an ambassador, an angel of the last judgment, to provide a time of mercy and an opportunity for a Nineveh-like repentance. When St. Vincent Ferrer was only 46 years old, he became grievously ill. And eventually our Lord appeared to him, accompanied by the great mendicant friars, St. Francis of Assisi and St. Dominic. And our Lord said to Vincent Ferrer, among other things, the following, quote, Arise then and go to preach against vice. For this have I specially chosen thee. Exhort sinners to repent, for my judgment is at hand, unquote. Our Lord told St. Vincent that his preaching before the coming of the Antichrist would be for mankind a merciful occasion of repentance and conversion. Vincent was to be the angel of the last judgment as depicted in the apocalypse 
written by St. John. In fact, while preaching from a platform in the city of Salamanca, the saintly Dominican openly proclaimed his exalted role, saying, quote, I am the angel of the last judgment, and I am preaching judgment to you. Of the thousands that listened to him, many doubted, some scoffed. Others were outraged at such a claim. And to quiet the rumblings in the crowd and to prove his divine appointment, St. Vincent Ferris said, Some of you, go near St. Paul's Gate, and you will find a dead woman being borne on men's shoulders on the way to the grave. Bring the corpse back to me, and you shall hear proof of what I tell you. A few men went on their errand while the multitude waited, and soon the coffin was brought before Vincent with the dead woman in it. The holy preacher commanded that she return to life, and that the dead woman immediately sat up. Then came an interrogation of sorts. Who am I? Vincent asked the woman. She answered, You, Father Vincent, are the angel of the apocalypse, as you have already told this vast assembly. Oh, how his preaching brought about miracles of grace. As a conservative estimate, it is said that St. Vincent Ferrer converted nearly 30,000 Jews and some 8,000 Moors. As for the statistics, perhaps the total number of his conversions was about 200,000 souls, among them not only Jews and Muslims, but also heretics and apostate Catholics. And an example of his power and his sermons, consider a case that happened in Toulouse, where he spoke on the passion of Christ in an open square for six hours without a break before a crowd of 30,000 people. When he cried out, Arise ye dead and come to judgment, the whole crowd fell on their faces and begged for God's mercy. And then there were the miracles. One particular miracle to confirm his preaching happened in this way. There was a rich Jew of Andalusia named Abraham who began to leave a church in anger when Vincent was preaching. The Jew did not like what he was hearing. As some people at the door tried to stop him from leaving, St. Vincent cried out, Let him go. Come away, all of you, at once and leave the passage free. The people did as Vincent ordered, and at the instant the Jewish man left, part of the porch structure fell on him and crushed him to death. Then the saint rose from his chair and went to the body. He knelt there in prayer, and eventually Abraham, the Jewish man, came back to life. And the first words out of his mouth, he said, The religion of the Jews is not the true faith. The true faith is that of the Christians. But there are so many signs and wonders of Vincent Ferrer. According to the Acta Sanctorum records, the Acts of the Saints, the official number of miracles equaled 873 official miracles confirmed by the church. Miracles became second nature to Vincent because the number of miracles goes well beyond the official count. He performed signs and wonders as if it were a habit with him. As part of his missions to various places, the ringing of the miracle bell announced the time for the sick and suffering to come forward for healing. Some say he performed on average eight miracles a day, and he may have performed approximately 60,000 miracles in his lifetime. As one observer wrote, it was a miracle when he did not perform a miracle. Authors who wrote about St. Vincent tell of 70 persons who were delivered from diabolical possession from St. Vincent Ferrer, while 30 persons were raised literally from the dead. And all this occurred to confirm his message of judgment and salvation, for he was the angel of the last judgment. Now, St. Vincent Ferrer is often pictured with not only a Dominican habit, but also sprouting wings. Multitudes of people witnessed him in the middle of his preaching suddenly assume wings and fly off to help some suffering person at the point of death. He would then return the same matter, flying back, and continue preaching. Preach conversion and penance. But some might object, saying that 
St. Vincent Ferrer identified himself as the angel of judgment and preached as if the end of the world were near, then why didn't the last day arrive at his watch? Some might even say that since the world did not end, Vincent, at least in that respect, failed as a prophet. But this would be a false conclusion. It is true that some prophecies are absolute and bound to happen. Other prophecies or predictions by individuals can be contingent based upon reform and penance. Through Vincent's thunderous words and the results of his preaching, the end of the world was simply delayed. Again, we consider the Ninevites who were told by Jonah that in 40 days, God told him their city was going to be completely destroyed. But such a prophecy was contingent, dependent upon the response of the citizens because they listened to the preaching of Jonah and dependence because they changed, not God. The conditional prophecy was not carried through. Heaven's message over the last two centuries has been very consistent. Our Lady has openly stated on more than one occasion that she can no longer hold back the hand of her divine Son. A judgment is coming upon the human race, yet there are few angels of judgment challenging men to do penance and to make reparation. For decades now in the church, we have been told that things are, have never been better in this modern age of renewal. With a Kennedy-like naive optimism, we believe that all humanity's ills could be solved. That if we could reach the moon, then nothing was beyond human power, including the whole elimination of poverty. Many felt that the modern church would have to move beyond her stifling medieval customs and appeal to the men of the world like never before. With our modern sloganeering, our ecclesiastical talking points, our mandatory enthusiasm, our Woodstock-like events, and compulsory optimism, we're beginning to discover that we have failed to read the signs of the times properly. We opened up the windows to the world, and an invasion of worldly thinking entered. We dialogued with the Athenians in the Areopagus and became ever more assimilated. We're like everybody else. We mingled with modern-day Canaanites, we married their neo-pagan ways, and instead of being a leaven, a catalyst, and consecrating the world to Christ, Catholics became an ingredient in a worldly mire. In short, we find ourselves living in times that mirror the latter half of the 14th century when St. Vincent Ferrer lived. Public satanic rituals are being offered in public government buildings. New Age movements, child sacrifice of abortion, libertinism, promiscuity, constitutionally protected, and sins that cry to heaven for vengeance being adopted by whole nations as legal institutions or so-called lifestyle choices. A minor apostasy at least is present, and perhaps a prefigurement of the Antichrist may soon come. The people of Noah's time have every right to rise up against us and to witness against us because our crimes are worse than theirs. How we could use a preacher like St. Vincent Ferrer, who often preached on that passage of Scripture dealing with the end times. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars. The saintly Dominican then adds, when any great and heavenly affliction is about to come on the world, often some warning sign is shown in the sky or in the upper air. And this happens by the mercy of God. So that people forewarned of impending tribulation by means of these signs, through prayer and good works, may obtain in the tribunal of mercy a reversal of the sentence passed against them by God, the judge in the heavenly courts, or at least by penance, the of life, may prepare themselves against the impending affliction, unquote. Vincent then went on to speak of the waning moon 
in the night sky, which represented those areas on the map which would not preserve the Catholic faith, but would rather fall away from the faith. And as a final example of his preaching, the zealous friar speaks of the moon and the falling stars connected with the old heavens as representing the present church, which was no longer in the state in which Christ founded it. As the ambassador of Christ the Savior, appointed by the Pope as a universal missionary, St. Vincent cried out, Christ founded the church in great lowliness and poverty. Now all this is turned round to pride, pomp, and vanity, as may be easily seen in every rank of the church. Mercy and liberality are changed into usury and violence. Chastity becomes licentiousness. Uncleanness becomes corruption. The brightness of virtue is changed into envy and malignity. Temperance has become gluttony. Patience has given way to anger, war, and divisions amongst people. Diligence is superseded by negligence. He then ends by stating that the moon of the church will experience a lunar eclipse, almost as if she had completely disappeared. The time of the passion of the church is near. In fact, we are already at a mystical Calvary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.